This one now has metal snaps in it and the hood. The only thing it's lacking is my tie out tabs. But this is running at 11 ounces with metal snaps. It'll be 10 ounces with plastic snaps. And I'm going to pick my way through tight quarters here. And we go right through this deal here. Bounce on it, I can do whatever. It's very tough. I can get in here as a get in here and bounce up and down on it. Very tough. Very tough, no problems. All right, I got this one side pinned up. I just, uh, you know, I put the beast, I put the beast in here in my Dyneema poncho hammock. Why not snap in the uh, tent pole adapters that go with the beast and try putting a canopy over top with tent poles. I don't know. Tap in here. Throw those straps over. Alright, so now I have no idea how this is going to work. So now we poke this into here. And that makes it so it doesn't move at all. Alright, so here's my canopy. Something I never even planned on. I just like, bing, you know, like Thomas Edison, it just popped in my mind. Bam, there we go. Bam. Well, it finally happened. The Dyneema Poncho went out on me this morning. So, I finally found out it's not unbreakable. <laughs> At first I was a little disappointed, but now I'm, now I'm kind of excited about it because because now I know, I know where the point is. I know, I know where the weak weak spots are. I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. I'm I'm going to show you the uh, the damages. Kind of relieved about it that it that it finally broke. Because I was doing I was doing some stuff. I have done some stuff with it that I've not done with any other of our gear. As you know, I was I was pushing it to the limit, and you know I I reached it. When I was an engineer at Easton Aluminum, <clears throat> I was I was tasked with testing some of some materials and different products and stuff like that in destructive ways, so we could see how long things lasted or or where things broke, how they fatigued. And with the uh, Dyneema Poncho project, uh, I've been observing. It, it's, it, it had been holding up pretty well, but I was starting to see a couple little things that I, you know, I wasn't sure about. I mean, nothing had developed where I could really tell. And, uh, and now that I see the failure, I can see those were indeed signs that it was starting to go. I was actually starting to get a little worried, you know what I mean? Because it wasn't breaking. <laughs> Because I mean, you know, I I got in my in my big old hiking boots, you know, strung up as a hammock, and I got in and and bounced in it several, t you know, a number of times. And one time I even accidentally stepped stepped in the hood, which actually started a problem with the hood itself. And uh, I just kind of taped it up, but I you know I didn't really attribute that. That's that's genuine abuse, you know, no doubt about it. But anyway, I think that when I did that, I think I also, because of stepping in the hood, I think I, I probably damaged the edge of the actual poncho fabric somewhat, um, because I, because the way I went into the hood, my the heel of my boot caught on the edge of, 
of, of, the, of the poncho itself, you know, set up as a hammock. So I'm, I'm like, I probably initially damaged it right there, and I, that might be the failure point. This thing may have never failed had I not done that. <laughs> it's quite possible, I mean, especially for something that's, you know, 10 ounces. My thoughts are, you know, I don't, I don't want to give up on the project, you know, because I've only gotten to the point where I've discovered where the limitation is. So now would now would be the that's this would be the stupid time to quit on it. <laughs> it would have been better to quit on it before I got to this point. The thing I was looking for in the Dyneema was to be able to be ultra light and to be able to have people that are 300 pounds or whatever be able to be able to use a really ultralight poncho as a hammock so that's kind of that's kind of my goal and, and not not just that somebody need to be heavy but just to be able to know that it would take that I, I think is the thing so you could know you get out you just don't have to worry about it it does give you a different lay when you're when you're in the hammock which I I like both I like the traditional but it's but it's also kind of cool the Dyneema lay in the hammock. It doesn't it doesn't wrap up around you like all your traditional uh, nylon polyester uh, hammocks do. They they wrap right up around you. The Dyneema has no stretch to it, so it doesn't so it doesn't um, it you lay in there. You're actually I I. I started coining the term you lay on your hammock, not in your hammock. You know, most hammocks you're laying kind of in them. But the Dyneema one, you're really laying on it because it doesn't let you sink into it. It doesn't stretch and give. So I've got a point here where it was starting to tear the hood, <clears throat> where it was starting to tear the hood after I stood in it and jumped in it with my boots on. And I taped that with Dyneema tape and it's held its own just fine. And then um, I had another spot right here. And you can see, if I put my finger behind there, you can see the only place it tore was the hood itself. And that's my construction of the hood is the reason why the hood was a weak point. So I already knew that early on that, that I needed to change how I how I how I attached the hood and everything because I created stress points which I was concerned about from the beginning. So here's the hood right here. So I mean I know that and I know that the weak point here is the hood. That's why in, in all of our ponchos early on we discovered that and we uh <clears throat> We put the reinforcing collar in all of our ponchos uh, to combat that, to alleviate the stress point. And we've never had a failure, to my knowledge, of any of our regular ponchos in the hood area. I think it being a, a raw edge around here, I can see now I've, I've developed even some more. I've developed, starting to develop even some more coming off that cut edge. I've got to do a little something more here. Now that I've seen it tear, I know I know where the problem is and I can I finally pushed it to the point where like I say but I was starting to get worried because I'm like you know it's got a point where it's gonna give I need to know what it is. So I'll be doing something here I've got some ideas in mind to reinforce that edge and stuff like that. The Nima Poncho project it's not over, we're just beginning. And when we get it all dialed in, it's gonna be beautiful.